Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And we've got the usual suspects, minus two missing. We've got Eric Peterson for this week's roundtable. Eric, how are you? I'm good. The technician, Eric Peterson, I should say. We got Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how are you? Welcome back. Hey, I'm glad to be back. Too glad long of a hiatus. It, well, it was too long. Um, you were missed. Um, of course, we've got the uh, Nightcap Meister, the Nightcap OG Dude Buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. Thank you. Good to see you. And then, of course, breathe in the mailing. He's out the marketing. The Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you, Mark? I'm good. I'm good. And last but not least, Scott Todd, the flight school Sherpa, the professor, the brain from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And if you want to automate your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the landing. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Speaking of flight school and flight school live, today's podcast is sponsored by flight school and flight school live. And uh, if you want to start doing deals in real time with the Sherpa himself and Tate Litchfield at Flight School Live. Learn more. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with either Scott Bossman or Mike Zeno and really start going up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently, and save yourself so much time and headache uh, for sure. So we got that out of the way. We're in the in in summer and I've got two of my three kids out and, uh, you know, sort of that dog days of summer, if you will. And you know what my wife and I are doing every night? Well, you probably don't because we're watching a lot of TV. I know what Boston was thinking. And uh, I, I'd like to say that, you know, it, uh, it's, it's all good there, but... Are we talking about like drinking wine? wine? Are we talking about drinking wine? Drinking wine, Napa wine, absolutely. But we should be talking about our favorite, because last week we talked about our favorite books, our summer reading list. What are we watching these days? Um, on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. I assume everyone who's listening has already cut the cord, except for me. Um, their favorite shows. So... I promised Zeno I wouldn't pick on him first. So let's just pick on the technician, Eric Peterson. What have you been watching these nights, these days? What's, what's right. your, your show recommendation? I'm going to give you three. So first of all, the family show um, for, you know, kind of nighttime before the, the kids head off to bed. We've been watching America's Got Talent. Um, the kids enjoy that a lot, and it's, it's fun sometimes to watch. So we've got that. Um, I won't give you my wife's pick. We'll skip over that one. But uh, from Netflix, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the sh um, there's a show called Chef's Table. I don't know if anyone has seen it. But um, it's all about chefs and kind of like their whole process, like getting their ingredients. And it's, it's just like their whole story. It's, it's really interesting to me to see kind of like how they're, you know, coming up with their, their dishes and different things and just hear their stories. Um, so I found that to be pretty cool. And, um, you know, we've got uh, Jack Bauer moved to Netflix with uh, Designated Survivor Season 3. Uh, obviously, he's not Jack Bauer anymore, but uh, I recently had the privilege of seeing him here in Franklin, Tennessee um, at a local theater. He also sings. Wow. Um, so that was interesting, but, uh, no, I, I like designated Sur survivor. I watched the, uh, other two seasons on regular TV and, and, uh, I'll be checking out the one on Netflix here soon. Fantastic. Fantastic. Bearland Aaron, what are you and Bearland Melissa watching these days? Well, um, Melissa doesn't really watch too much TV. So the, uh, watch lists are pretty much just my stuff. Um, so basically you'll find an extensive collection of 
anything um, sci-fi or car motorcycle related. But I'll give you my kind of my three picks on major platforms. Um, Amazon um, really like Grand Tour. Um, it's the European guys, um, Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May that used to do um, Top Gear. And they have their own Amazon special now called Grand Tour. And they're up to all kinds of zany antics with cars that none of us can afford. Um, on Netflix, um, I just finished 3%. It's kind of a Hunger Games-ish kind of, you know, series. But um, it's actually, I think, Spanish or something. But they, you know, it's, it's dubbed in English and it's done well. So it's not very distracting. Um, currently I'm watching DC's legends on there, but, um, and then Hulu, this would be my adult selection. Um, it is a show called letter Kenny and it's kind of some country country farm guys in Canada and it's a comedy, but it's fairly raunchy. So you definitely don't want to watch that with the kids. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Fantastic. And then the Nightcap Meister, Scott Bossman. Yeah. What are, what are you uh, uh, and Aaron watching? You got the, you guys don't know if you're, if you're mixing in the family we fun. Do, we do, we well. do mix in the family fun. Um, Aaron and I are, are, we're slowly working our way through uh, Game of Thrones. I read it's most of the books, except for uh, the last. Uh, but then uh, my, my son and I are, are watching one together and this is definitely, it, it's definitely in line with the geekiness of, of our community. Uh, Mark, I don't know if you've ever seen Battlestar Galactica, the series that came out in 2005. I have, I've seen the old Battlestar Galactica, but not the oh, 2005 the new, one. Oh, the, it's, that series is actually very well written. The, the special effects are very good. And uh, it's a very suspenseful, uh, geeky show. So my son and I are making our way through Battlestar Galactica. For me, it's my second time. Nice. And then uh, the, the show I watch when I'm uh, folding laundry or whatever in the, in the living room, I, I, like, uh, I like on Netflix um, the, the David Letterman show, My Next Guest Needs No Introduction. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but Dave interviews uh, a lot of uh, celebrities, people in politics, um, and sits down with him for an hour and does a pretty in-depth interview on uh, where they're at in life. So he's done, uh, you know, former presidents, movie stars, um, the woman who was, uh, the, or the, the young woman who was um, uh, shot by the Taliban uh, in her school bus a number of years ago who won the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. So that, that's a great show that uh, I've enjoyed as well this summer. Fantastic. Fantastic. Zen Master, are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> so, uh, um, like Scott, we waited to all the the you know all the media was gone. And we're doing Game of Thrones, so we're currently on uh, season five is starting. So we got a ways to go with that. Um, really loving it. It's uh, got the power. I think I said last week to really depress you. So it's kind of interesting. And then. Um, once that's done, we get to finish uh, the last season of Billions because we put that on hold because, uh, you know, uh, we got hooked into Game of Thrones. Although I, I haven't been too overwhelmed with this, what's happened so far with the Billions this season. I'm hoping that uh, same thing with Ray Donovan. We never finished that one. That's a great series, but I don't know. Sometimes these, these, these shows, they go like maybe a season too long or something, and it kind of dwindles. One, the Rage at the Fire Station, everybody's talking about it, is Chernobyl. And, and, oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so they they keep saying how phenomenal it is. I remember it was probably 15 years ago, we had a group of uh, young kids from Chernobyl uh, came over to the fire station for a tour. And, you know, the, you know, I don't know the timeline, but they were definitely uh, affected by that whole circumstance. And so there's a picture on the wall at the stations of me and another guy with those kids. So, you know, I, I didn't know that it was this uh, series, and it's got a lot of, like, a, really a bunch of high reviews. Um, so looking to do that. And then there's the standbys. I wait till everybody's done. I've, I've heard great things about two other shows that I, well, I, Marco Polo I want to see because I, I'm reading Genghis Khan and the Conquering of the Modern World. And this is about Kublai Khan, Kublai Khan I think is in Marco Polo. And uh, so that one, and then 
I've heard a great bunch of things about Dexter. I mean, I never really got into it, but I've heard people say it's incredible. We could binge watch that. So probably that. Nice. Nice. Um, I love it. All right, Scott Todd. In between, well, in between, you know, probably having to reprogram your surface when you have the time. <laughs> After you run that, that virus uh, software a few times and, then you probably get a chance to, you know, relax and, and watch some, uh, some TV. Well, for, first of all, first of all, the service, the two of them that I have, they run rock solid. Okay. Like I can't imagine life without them. And in fact, they raise the bar, I think for everybody else. I'm surprised that you guys haven't jumped on the, the uh, bandwagon yet. However, just to set the record straight, the surface is great. I'm able to watch great shows on them as well because they're so stable and rock solid. Uh, but I don't do a lot of TV watching, okay? So, you know, like basically it's kind of uh, weird. There are some things that have caught my attention though. Let me tell you what we're, what we're doing. My wife and I are now for the third time, I think third time, we are going back and watching Lost. Why? Because we just got back from Hawaii and we're like, oh, we were there, we we're on that beach, oh, we, we've been there, da, 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 and we've forgotten them through time. So we're on a loss kick right now. I think we just started season two last night. So we'll keep chiseling away at that. Um, I did recently enjoy the, um, the HBO uh, documentary, the inventor about the black, the bad blood lady. That was really good. So if you haven't seen that, go watch it. I'm, it's forcing me or, or getting me to read the book. I talked about that last week. Uh, there's a new Showtime miniseries coming out, which I cannot think of the name of it. Um, and it was really, it's, um, it just caught my attention, but sadly I can't even think of the name of it right now, but whatever the newest, uh, miniseries is on uh, Showtime, go check that out. Cause I'm going to, that's it. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, um, wait, wait, wait one more thing. No, oh, you know, favorite series is though, Mark. For nighttime watching, is it the story of Steve Jobs? What? No, the Nightcap. The Nightcap. The nightcap. Show. Of oh, course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just go watch all. Go. Go binge all of those. They're great. Yeah, between Nightcap and Lots, um, that that is some really good watching there, uh, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mark, I was wondering, Scott said this is the third time watching it. I'm curious, have you figured out the ending yet? Or is that why you're watching it? The well, third time? I think we out. have. I think we have We have come to um, – we, we've noticed a few things in Lost. So, one, uh, it's interesting because what we've noticed is that whatever happened in their real lives kind of gets exponentially blown up on the island. So, as an example – uh, the character that plays Michael in the show, you know, he, he, um, he was not married, but he, the mother of his child kind of took the child away from him and moved to another country. And, you know, so like that's on a small scale, but then he gets them back. They, they, they're on this plane. They end up on the island. But then on the island, the others come and take the child away again. So it's whatever happened, exponential. Charlie is a um, Charlie has a heroin problem in real life, and then on the island he gets a bigger heroin problem because the plane filled with heroin crashes on the plane and he becomes addicted to it. So everything that happens in their real lives, we think, kind of gets blown up in proportion on the island, and uh, basically the the ending we we obviously they all. The people that are there have died and they've moved on to heaven. And that's kind of like the conclusion of it. So we're, we're picking up some spoiler alert. Well, a spoiler alert. All these people okay. listen to the podcast. They've all we're seen lost. lost. And if not, they're like, yeah, <laughs> it's taken me three times to figure out what the heck happened. So, you know, spoiler, spoiler. Alert. <laughs> Mark, just put it in the warning. Just put in the warning. Don't listen to Scott's thing. It's a spoiler. Like alert. 10 years old. It's yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like at what point do we not, care anymore that's true that's true all right so for for me as far as like being a good dad with each one of my kids it's very important that i watch with them arrested development (laughs) 
So yes, that's like that is like a family tradition with each child. We watch Arrested Development together um, because there's always money in the banana stand. All right, so that's that's one of them. Now the other the other documentary that we have to watch together, which I think is a phenomenal sort of um, way of explaining success in life, is Jiro Dreams of Sushi. And here's this guy that takes a very simple thing and is the best in the world at it, right? I mean, just, what is it? It's rice, a little soy sauce, a little wasabi, and fish. But he's the best in the world at it. And it's a really interesting documentary, especially to watch with the kids. And if you're not even a sushi fan, you might be after watching um, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. And then as far as adult uh, the, the, the adult shows are, for me, I, I love Black Mirror, especially being techie and geeky. Really just love Black Mirror. And, um, and then, you know, Mike, I did finish Billions. I do recommend Billions as far as, for those of you that, um, you know, it, it's, it's, I, think it's, I think it's a great show, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And you have this sort of sense that um, you never have enough, right? Now you get to watch the ego run rampant in billions because even the billionaires don't feel like they have enough. They don't have enough power. They don't have enough money. And it's just never enough. And you just watch in real time how that, that void destroys almost every important relationship to them. So Billions is this great show, but also a cautionary tale. And then another cautionary tale, of course, is Handmaid's Tale, which uh, we are now current on. And uh, that's a tough show to watch, but if you can, it, I think it's, 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 a, it's really well done, for sure. Those are, those are my picks. I'm expecting Scott Todd to, you know, come up with some kind of snarky comment uh, about like, oh, well, you know, everyone in the handmade sales using a surface. So. No, I, I, I wouldn't know because I've tried to watch that show and it's like, yeah, it doesn't catch me. So I don't know. Give, give it another run. Give it. It's. Well, I've given it two seasons. I gave it oh, maybe. Really? A, yeah. Yeah. I gave it a season and a half and. I don't know. It's uh, they kind of creep me out when they wear the little hats and stuff. So I think I'm out. <laughs> All right. And then you then you see the people like wearing those costumes at like you know protest, and it really freaks me out. They're like clowns. Man. Okay. Look. <laughs> some people like chocolate. Some people vanilla. But, but it probably was all created on the surface. So. Well. I can tell you for sure it wasn't because there's no like, like stoppage, like, okay, now run your antivirus uh, during the show. Okay. Like it, just, it just runs continually. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So it's really, it's really cool to watch. So we are now at that point in the podcast on this very light round table where we have not discussed one piece of land investing. Um, I feel like Scott Bossman, you should give us like one case study of, of, of something. One case study, huh? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I just, I just did a deal, uh, last week I picked up a piece of land wholesale, uh, in an area that, uh, I had a strong buyer's list cause I was, I just, I came across it. I thought it was a good deal and I thought I had a buyer on the hook and, Turns out I had a buyer on the hook, so I got a nice terms deal out of that for 135 a month for 60 months, and I get my money out in 12 months. So it's kind of a nice way to acquire a property without mailing and and uh, make it happen pretty quickly. I love it. I love it. I want to uh, congratulate our coaching client, Luke Harris, for completing his hundredth deal, and he's at now 7,200 a month in passive income. Congrats to Luke. Um, and again, if you want to learn how to be like Scott or Luke, just go to landgeek.com forward slash 
training. And now we're at that point where we are going to get a really valuable tip from Bearland Aaron. Bearland Aaron, what's the tip of the week? Well, I was trying to figure out a way to um, kind of do a landing page for my deal a week and maybe my first look properties for my VIPs. And, uh, you know, my, my mailing platform has landing pages, but they don't really work for that kind of purpose, uh, the way they're laid out and stuff. So I was looking around and, you know, there's lead pages and, and some, and some companies that offer, you know, landing pages services. Um, and it's really nice, but it's an additional cost. And I wasn't, I didn't feel that I was quite ready to take on that additional cost at this point in my business. And, uh, I, I got a notification from Dropbox that, you know, said that they'd revamped or, 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 creating this service called paper. So I looked into it and uh, it's really quite nice. Um, you can set up a template that you can utilize over and over. Um, it's, you know, very rich as far as media goes. You just kind of drop in pictures, drop in videos, um, you can create tables on it, um, all kinds of neat stuff. And then you've got a shareable link. So, you know, it's not necessarily going to be indexable by Google, but I don't, know that that's really the purpose of um you know that sort of landing page that you would use for your email list and that sort of thing so you know you can just include that shareable link right in your uh email people click through it um you can even put your down payment link in the paper and uh everything will work it's a nice little nice little area um they also you can link to various folders within your dropbox if you want to share some further information for people to look at too. So I think it is a nice little solution for, um, for your emails and it's free. I love it. I love it. I feel like we should really have Eric Peterson pick it apart graphically to just see if it's, you know, a good enough landing page, but on the surface of it without looking at it and without having Eric give him, give the aesthetic, seal of approval i think it's great oh here he just wow that's bold all right eric well it's just it the template in, so. in real time let's take a look at the template I'm, I'm opening mine now let's see it's it's opening by the way um i'd be curious am i the only one that has firefox as their um their site like are you guys chrome oh, browser. Firefox or browser no way, man. I mean, I know, I know Scott's probably Internet Explorer, but besides, you know. Hey. <laughs> You're actually <laughs> called Edge. Wow. Wow. That's because they had to rebrand it because it was so bad. Wait, Very efficient. Tell me I have to, I have to log in, Bear Lamb. Uh, oh, no, you, don't, you don't have oh, to log maybe in. I've got an open. Template. You have an oh, okay. open? Yeah. Why can't I open it? Aaron, where's your Animoto video? I had to log in as well. Uh, I didn't place a video in it yet. Um, but you can. You can drop a video right in there. Okay. Um, in it, I, I, a lot of, some of mine I'll do through YouTube and I'll just set them to private but, or uh, non, non-public or whatever. Um, but it will, it'll do the, uh, the frame. So you can drop your video right in there and... You know, it's got the iframe. Why are you smiling? smiling. <laughs> hacked. Oh no. Bearland, he just he just hacked it. What did he do? See, that's because I shared it. You shared the live link. <laughs> well, to you guys. <laughs> All right, so you wouldn't normally do that. Yeah. I what do you think, uh, Eric Peterson? I mean, uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at the nearest town, nearest major city. Amenities list, property details, additional images. Nice time. You know, I think as long as you can protect it so people can't change it, um, you know, I think it's a decent solution for a free landing page. I mean, you could you could easily put your Animoto video here. You could put all your images, your content. I mean, to link your deal a week off to that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's that a way to free. say you don't like it. 
a decent solution? It sounds like a technical way to say you don't like it. <laughs> I'm not going to use it myself because I, I like <laughs> using lead pages, but it's paid. So I think for people getting started, just like we recommend MailChimp because it's free, but you know, I use ConvertKit, you know, it's the, it's the same philosophy there. Yeah, you know, speaking of free, there was a new free course about how to train your VAs that people are going crazy about. Scott Todd, you want to talk about that? Yeah, if you go to uh, InvestorNinjas.com forward slash free and register for free, there's a class in there. It's called My Favorite, um, Favorite Tool for Training VAs. And in like less than 40 minutes, you will have the tool, the ultimate tool that you need to train your VAs to keep them uh, up to date. And it's beautiful because Mark, like I know that you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but you know, like you go, you go and you make a training video, for example, like a zoom call and you're like, Hey, this is how you do it. Blah, 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 blah. You train them. And then like two weeks later, the developer of the website goes in there and they change something. So the screen looks different. And then the VA is like, well, I don't see it anymore. Or maybe it's a couple of years later and the, the new VA is like, well, this looks different. So then you're like, okay, well, let's get on an update call or let me update it for you or let me just do an addendum. Then you get this like kooky database of training videos, whatever. This tool is so cool. You do screenshots. You type in what you want it to say, like, and it will, it will create a video for them with annotations. It will speak it in a voice that you wouldn't even believe is, is a computer generated one. It's so dang real. And if you ever need to change a screen on the fly, you just go to pop in a new screenshot, just modify it and it updates it automatically. No processing, whatever. Here's the link. Just go ahead and use it again. It is a rock solid tool. It's a free tool. And I gave them free training. I gave everybody free training at InvestorNinjas.com. Four okay, slash so I just ruined my microphone from the drool. As yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, this is a game changer. This, this, this free product is a game changer. Like, I'm in love with it. I'm not, like, literally, the other day, someone on my team asked me something, and I sat on an airplane, not flying. I was passenger, 30, 35,000 feet, and I'm, like, typing out the training video, and like literally 10 minutes, I sent them the video. It turned out to be a one minute video, but it was screenshots of do, 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 do. This is what I want to say. And it's editable, easy on the fly, easy on the eyes. It makes training VAs easy. I wish I would have had this five years ago. I probably would have been like, I don't know, as big as you are now. In terms oh, of past income. That's a bold statement, but okay. <laughs> that's great. That's go big great. or go I'm, home. Man. I'm going to go watch. Oh, yeah, exactly. I'm going to go. Uh, watch the video. So um, I want to thank all the listeners. And if you're enjoying the round table, if you're enjoying the podcast, the biggest favor you can do, share it on the social medias, on the interwebs, send it to a friend, email to a friend. And then for the, for, for just send us some love, you know, Eric Peterson, the technician looks at me every day and says, Mark, has anyone subscribed, rated or reviewed the podcast today? <laughs> And do you know what type of shame spiral I have to go into when I say no? And the look of disappointment on his face? So for, for my sake, subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the Passive Income Launch Kit. Eric, was that good? That was awesome. All right. Are we good? We're good. Fairland Aaron? We were great. Uh, Scott Bossman? We're awesome. Zen Master? Very good. Surface? I mean, Scott Todd? Look, I want to tell Aaron, I like what you have here. The only problem is like I'm messing with paper here and I'm adding stuff to it, like my own, and I can't figure out how to delete the little, little elements that they put on there. It doesn't make sense. Like what's wrong with Dropbox? You can't delete the stuff you put on there. What you do you mean? Look like, like these little elements, you can't delete them. Well, there's a delete button on that one, but this one doesn't even have Are a delete button. Are you deleting button. all his elements? I'm, no, no, I'm deleting my own elements. <laughs> I changed everybody's access. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Doggy. That's, oh, all right. Yeah. That, 
That's yes, why, man. because I, I said you can comment now. You can't edit. So Hit the lead off. I That'll trusted work. you guys, and you let me down. You messed with my stuff. That was funny, That's though. Okay. All <laughs> right, all right. There was a lot of grief in there. All right, I like we, it. We're good. Are, are we ready to do this? One, One two, two, three. three. Let, let, let freedom ring. ring. No, it, it never, never sounds good ever. In person, it does at the boot camp. Yeah, in person, it does. I know. Boot camp's coming up in a, in a month. Holy cow. Are we ready for that? I'm excited. Vegas. Vegas. All right, we got to figure out. We got to figure out a summer destination, man, because this summer is Vegas. Last, last summer was Phoenix. The summer before that was Vegas. We got to find somewhere that's like, I don't know, not, not like 100 and something degrees in the summer. Mississippi in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's got mosquitoes and, you know, <laughs> that's not so good. It's like the, you know, their national bird is the mosquito. It's true. I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we got to go to like California. California is great. It's just that, you know, no one wants to spend 500 bucks a night at the Holiday Inn Express. I'm sure you can work some magic deal, man. You, Dan Danielle's magic. She she can negotiate and get us a good deal somewhere. No, I know, but you know the Westin, Vegas. It's gonna be great. It'll be hot. It's air conditioned. It's air conditioned the whole time. When do we ever go outside? We don't go outside, but the attendees do. Okay. All right. Uh, I think All it's right. a great way to to vet the attendees who are serious about land investing because, like, they're like the ones who are serious on that Saturday morning are there for the bonus session. Everyone else in Vegas, like they come in bleary eyed. Like, oh, <laughs> land investing. Because this is the first one we've had like near the strip, right? Like are, are we gonna require people to blow to like get access to the room? Like are they legal? Yeah, or? Bossman's gonna stand there with the breathalyzer. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. that would be interesting. <laughs> should, we, should we put an under over? <laughs> Yeah, seriously. I, I think we're going to have that, uh, some, new, some new games. We, listen, we might have some good stories. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I got another call soon. So uh, I, I got to run. But uh, what do you guys have going on the rest of the day? It's nice to buy a car. Car? Yeah, go buy a car. Maybe. Nice. nice. What Scott's, are you getting? Scott already bought a boat. Um, a BMW 3 Series. It's it's not a new one. It's a few years old. But my wife's tired of the uh, the gas that the Escalade sucks down. So, and the kids are both have their own vehicles now. So I think she's wanting to downsize into something more fun. Get the Model 3. Get the Tesla. No, oh, they have to worry about it, gas prices. We're not, we're not, yeah, we're not quite in that price range yet. We're not buying they any They have ones. to travel too far. I was going to say, to get two to hours away. Like, yeah, they I can't mean, do it on a charge. There's no, there's no charging stations out here. I mean, there's like, you wouldn't be able to go anywhere. Markets for horses, but I mean, that's the only charging station I've got. Fair watering enough. trough why wouldn't they add like a solar panel to it so it can charge itself i the uh there's like a hundred twenty thousand dollar one that has a solar panel on top oh. um like a like the fisker but it's not called the fisker anymore i forgot what it was yeah. we saw it at newport beach but it had like a like a solar panel on top you know that'd be fun i guess yeah fiskers are like a 200 mile an hour car too i think yeah, no, it's 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 fast. You don't see too many of them though. I, I've I've seen like one out here, but I don't know. All right, well, I'm gonna go start and uh, text the wife about all the new shows we have to watch now. 
Battlestar Galactica is going to be a tough sell, but I'm going to try. She'll enjoy it, actually. There's, there's a great drama component to that show. Drama, yeah. action, sci it's got everything. Yeah, I think, I think the negotiation might be, okay, I'll watch Battlestar Galactica, but you got to watch Big Little Lies. Oh, that's, that's a good show. I like that one. It's a good show. Aaron and I watch that one. All right. All right. I'm not, I'm not afraid. Tell her Galactica's a love story because that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll tell her it's like a Hallmark based in space. <laughs> that might work. Uh, a Hallmark. Hey, man, my my sister, my sister and my niece were were in a Hallmark uh, movie. What? Yeah, really. Cool. True, man. True. Like I think it was Memorial Day weekend. They were whatever they filmed. They had filmed one here in Florida, and my sister and niece. They were in there, like in one of the scenes. They were there. They they had to go there all day as a as a stand-in or a extra. They were in the uh, the show all day, and uh, it was really kind of cool to see them. Uh, when the show started, I was like asking everybody, like, does anybody have any idea how this one's going to end? It can't. I am clueless. <laughs> I did not win any fans that day by asking that question. Yeah. Now, Scott, you, you, know, you know what? You're the guy in the beginning of the show. Yeah. Yeah. You're I, like, you're like the slick corporate guy in the beginning of the show, not present on his phone. Yep. Not paying attention to the wife. Not paying attention. No, no, no it's never a wife. It's always a girlfriend. The girlfriend. Right. 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 Well, that that would be a pretty good one. I think if they, if they had that with the wife and the wife's like, I'm shutting this shit down and add it more into real life you know i think that would be the better way to go maybe you and i should collaborate on a hallmark show mark i think it, it would be like based on a piece of roland <laughs> and then like i think the plot is that um you know there's some, there's like some some tension between the two companies right and then you know all of a sudden the wives discover we have hearts of gold and we're really, you know, yeah, initially we were going to buy the property 25 cents on the dollar, but then they discover that, yes, we are still going to buy it 25 cents on the dollar, but it's because we're handling their tax problem. And we're going to actually help the community yeah. collect tax revenue. And yeah. then that final kiss at the end of appreciation for it. Listen, I, I have the perfect filming locations. I don't know sure it is. We'll, we'll talk later, Mark. Okay. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks, guys.